what I've got up for you? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Oops. Yeah. I don't know how to go back, but that's okay. So today, see. today we are going to make gratitude quilts. And uh, Lindsay was kind enough to show me this quilt that is actually hanging upstairs or was just recently hanging upstairs in the Ackland right now or just recently. So if you can imagine that we've met in the at the front desk in the Ackland and we are now walking up the stairs, that's where this piece will be. Um, does anyone know what this is? What are we looking at? A quilt. A quilt. That's right. Sometimes this reminds me of a painting though. And this morning, one of our friends said it looked like a collage. Can you see those things in it too? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Paintings and collages? Yeah. Oh. Um, what is a quilt? Do you know what a quilt is? It's like a blanket? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like a nice big blanket or bedspread. Now, sometimes quilts can be made just to hang on the wall, just like a painting or a photograph. So sometimes they are made as works of art, but most of the time you're right, they're made to be a blanket or a bed covering. So what are they made out of? Fabric. That's right. Cloth. Cloth, fabric. Um, and it can be all different kinds of cloth and fabric too. It's not just one specific kind, but it can be made out of whatever kind of cloth and fabric the artists have. Um, so if this is a quilt and it's meant to go on our bed, do you think this one upstairs in the Ackland is really tiny or really big? Me, big. Big. How big do you think it is? Maybe like, um, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. This one is almost eight feet tall and it's almost six and a half feet wide. So that's a pretty big, that's much bigger than any of us, right? Yes, um, that's a pretty big quilt. Now, a quilt is made kind of like a sandwich, right? There's three layers to our quilt. So the top layer is what we're seeing here, and it's called the quilt top. And it's where we have all the fun patterning and fabric and colorful little bits on it. Does anyone know what the inside of a quilt is called? What that middle layer is? What it's made out of? This is a tricky question. Feathers? Not feathers. It's called batting. And it's kind of like a, a, a nice thin fluffy layer. It gives our quilts a little bit of fluff and, and texture to them. It also gives them some more warmth because sometimes the fabric alone isn't warm enough for um, if it was for a house um, that might've been a little bit chilly. So the third back layer is called a backing and it's usually just made with plain fabric, um, all one color or one piece. And then we have one more part of it. Do you see this little thin edge all the way around this quilt? Yeah. That is called the binding and that wraps around the outside of the quilt and it goes through all three layers and it just helps hold them together. The final step of a quilt is what's actually called the quilting, which is where the seamstress might sew lines of stitching that run all the way up and down or side to side or sometimes they move around in all a bunch of different patterns and it stitches through all three layers of fabric and holds it nice and tight together. So that is how a quilt is made, which is pretty cool. Daddy. Yeah. Now, this quilt is made by an artist whose name is Irene Williams. She is a contemporary yeah. artist. Does anyone remember what that word means, contemporary? <coughs> Talked about it before. Mm. Uh. Remember, it has to do with time. Do you remember? Speed? Now. Now. I think I heard the word now. Yes. That means that she's been making art sort of in our lifetime or more or less in like the last 50 years. Um, she died in 2015. So about five years ago is when she passed away. 
And in case you're wondering, she was 95 years old when she passed away. Wow. Now, this is a picture of the artist. So this is Irene Williams. She was from Alabama and she grew up on a farm. She grew up in a very tiny rural community, meaning it's all farmland. It's not a big city. Um, and it was a small African-American community of about 700 people. So that's really small. Um, she only made it through the ninth grade in school before she dropped out to work on her farm full time. So that was how they made money and how they were able to um, have food to eat and things like that. But she also, the other really amazing thing about this community that she grew up in was it was a, it's a very well-known quilting community in Alabama. Uh, this artist might have had a piece of clothing that was too worn to wear. She would then take that piece of clothing and cut it up and use any little piece that she could salvage and put it into this quilt. So this one might have been old quilts that have been cut up and re-stitched together. Pieces of clothing, maybe it was um, old bedding or remnants of fabric from some other sewing production. So these artists would use every tiny scrap into their work and we really see that in this middle piece. Um, and this one is the one that really reminds me of a collage, this middle one. Anything else that you notice about these pieces? Um, an interesting thing about Irene Williams, this artist, is that Again, she was a part of this huge quilting community that I'm going to talk more about in a minute. But even though she was surrounded by other women and quilters all around her, she chose to work alone. She really wanted to make her work um, in isolation and she wanted to make her work without all of these outside influences. So she's a member of this quilting community, but she really worked by herself, um, which I think is interesting. And this sort of patterning that she's using where it's not, um, it's not one design repeated over and over, every element is sort of its own shape. This is that lazy gal or that crazy quilt. If you remember when we looked at Lauren Francis Adams mural in the Ackland a few months ago, mm -hmm. that big quilt that was on the wall, that was called a crazy quilt. And that's, that means that it's just sort of um, we started puts together yeah. as it goes. Mm -hmm. But that quilting community that I was telling you about is a quilting community that's in Alabama. They started around the 1920s and it's called G's Bend. And G's Bend, um, when they first started in the 1920s, so that was about 100 years ago, you know, they were just making quilts for their own needs and for their own uses. And then around the 60s and then again in the 80s, they gained a lot of recognition. Somebody noticed the beautiful work that they were making and brought it to the attention of uh, the world, really. And now you can see their work in museums um, all over. They're very well known for their quilt making. But you can see that quilt making is very much a community effort. Um, a lot of times there are four or five women who are working on one quilt. They're all stitching together. It's a time to socialize. It's a time to check in with each other. Um, so as you're working in a little bit, I want you to think about community and maybe working alongside your parents um, and maybe you're all making a block to put together to make your quilt. So you can work on that together. Um, this is a picture from 2020. So this is G's been today. Oh. Now, most of their quilts are in that sort of crazy quilt style, but traditionally quilts used quilting blocks, which is just a small block that's a pattern that gets repeated over and over again. And we're gonna kind of base our quilt off of that idea of the quilting block. And I liked these because this is the sort of G's bend twist on the quilting block. You can see that pattern in the middle it's a uh, it's called the pinwheel pattern and you can see that it gets repeated but it's not perfectly repeated it still has that little bit of that crazy quilt influence to it so here's that pinwheel again and an, and an example of what it looks like in that sort of traditional quilt where we take that one block 
because a quilt has to start out small, right? We start with one block and then we add a second block and then we add a third block until all of a sudden we have this huge quilt. So I wanted to show you an example of what it would look like with these sort of pattern blocks right next to each other because our piece is going to be a little bit more like what you're seeing here. So we have three different quilting blocks that we are going to base our designs off of. This first one is called the pinwheel. That was the one you were seeing in the quilt we just looked at. This second one is one of my favorites. It's called the bear's paw. And if you see it in just a minute, I'll show you it'll really look like that paw print. And then over here we have the sawtooth star. Do you notice anything that's similar about these three shapes, these three uh, quilt blocks that you're seeing? They're square. They don't have triangles. You can, yeah, you can just say it. I heard square and what was the other part? Triangles. Triangles. Yeah, exactly. So they're all made out of squares and triangles. Two simple shapes that can make a whole bunch of different patterns. And if you looked up quilt blocks online, you would see hundreds of other different variations of patterns. There's so many, but we're going to look at these three. So this is the example that I made. You can see it here behind me and I'll show you on my camera a little bit closer in just a minute. We're going to make three quilt blocks like of the examples that I just showed you. And then we're going to add three gratitude drawings to those. Now, what does the word gratitude mean? Any guesses? Thankful. Thankful. Yeah, so gratitude, showing gratitude is being thankful for something or um, feeling really appreciative of something or something that's making you feel really happy. Yeah. So I was thinking about this time where we are hanging out at home and I was thinking about what are the three things that I feel really thankful for and made my drawings off of those. So in this top one, I have my dog and my three cats and I really am happy that I get to snuggle with them and play with them a lot more. I have this picture of my backyard because I have a beautiful porch and I have green grass and trees that I get to hang out. And then I have my art studio. So those are things that I am very thankful for. Um, Ooh, there's pictures up here now. That's cool. Um, yeah, so those are things that I'm really thankful for. So in just a minute, I'm going to switch over to my instruction camera and show you how to work these quilts, how we're going to how we're going to build them up. Um, but in the meantime, while I get that set up, I want you to be thinking about things that you're feeling thankful for, because we are going to start with one gratitude drawing. So I'm going to get that set up so you guys can start thinking and you're going to get out one of your blank six by six squares. And then you'll be able to work on the rest on your own. But the first thing I want you to do is to get out one of your just blank six by six squares. So not one of the templates, but just one that's empty. And you can use a pencil or crayons or colored pencil, any kind of coloring item that you have. And I want you to start on one of those gratitude drawings. So just show me a picture of something that you're thankful for. And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be something you're thankful for while we're at home. It can be something you're thankful for at any time. Um, so if you want to get out either your, um, one of the templates like this that you want to use, yes. there's three different ones. I'm going to do the bear paw for this example because it's my favorite. Um, this was the one I made earlier today for you to look at. And I'm going to make this one on this blank piece of paper. But there's three different ways that we can make our quilt squares. If you are just super happy coloring, you can just take that template that you've got and just color in those shapes. You could think about them being different colors or if they had different fabric patterns. Um, so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it 
is there's two different ways that we can do it using collage. So that's where you can use that colorful paper you have or little bits of scrap paper or wrapping paper. Um, there's two ways we can do that. The first way is that we can use this template and I'm just gonna fill in my shapes with little bits of paper. So I have some paper that I cut earlier today. And so I might just use those to kind of fill in my shapes until I have all of this block filled in and then I might glue them down and then I could do the same thing I could do little pieces to fill in these shapes and I can just build up my quilt square using little pieces of fabric kind of like that collaged looking quilt that we saw earlier. Now the third way and the way that I'm going to do it is I am just going to use my template to look at because it helps me see the shapes and I'm going to make it on a blank piece of paper using my fun colorful paper that I have. So what is the biggest shape that you see here? I want to use my template by cutting it out and, put, and putting it in the thing. Yeah. A what square? is the biggest shape that you see here? Can you cut it out for you? Yes, Which one? I, square? Heard, I heard the square, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to first make this square. And I noticed that my square is about two thirds wide and two thirds tall than of my big square. So I'm going to make one that's just about that size. I really am not worried that it's perfect. And I'm not worried if it's a little bit too small or too big. I'm not going to worry about that. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and you can measure it. I heard someone say that they were going to cut out their template and use it as um, as a way to measure and that's a good idea. So that feels pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's the next shape that you think I should make? Does anyone have an idea? I've got my big square done. What do I need now? The smaller square? Mm, I could make the smaller square, but I left that one as the background, but I could make it with another piece of fabric. Let's do that. Why don't we? So if I made that smaller square, I made it a little bit too small, but that's okay. There we go. Now what do I need to make? Triangle. Triangles. Cutting out little triangles for that. Sure. The way I make triangles is actually not by making triangles to start off with. That seems kind of funny. But I make my triangles by making a square. So I have my square right here. And it's about the right size that I want it to be. And then where do you think I need to cut to make that triangle? Right across the middle. That's right. Just right across the middle. And then, ta-da, I have two triangles that are just the right size. And I'm going to do that one more time. And I like to lay everything out before I glue it down so that I make sure it's just the way I want it. So now I have the claws on my bear paw. I could leave this white if I wanted it like a background, or I could see what it looks like if I add in another design, more fabric. So I've cut my square. All right, now there we go. That's my finished quilt square. I haven't glued anything down, but I'm feeling pretty happy about it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue everything down since I've got it just the way I want it.
So I want to take a few minutes just to show you how I put it all together. And that'll be something that you'll do at home once you've made all three of your quilt squares and all three of your gratitude drawings. So let me pull this down because you're going to want to attach them if you can see here. I did mine so that they're two squares wide and three squares long. And what I did is I used mm -hmm. a hole puncher and mm -hmm. yarn to put mine together. But I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can do it if you don't have a hole puncher and yarn. But what I did was I really, I started at the bottom. You can see that. And I just made sure to line my two squares up and I used my pencil to make myself a little mark of where I wanted that hole to go. And it's important that they stay right next to each other because if they're too far apart, then you might have your, um, when it hangs, your quilt squares might be all lopsided. So I try to get them as close as I can. And then all I did was I took a piece of yarn and I tied it in a knot on the back. Now you can see it's not super tight. I tried to make a really loose knot because if I pulled too tight on this yarn, I risk ripping my paper. So I just made a really loose one and I did that all the way up, two on each side. And then at the top, I did two little loops to hang in. When I tried it with just one, hanging loop at the at the top it tended to fold when I hung it so I had to do the two but if you don't have a hole puncher um, you can also just staple yours together or you could just use tape on the back side and just tape your pieces together now if you don't have yarn you could use ribbon you could use strips of fabric you could use pipe cleaners um, you could use maybe rubber bands. There's all sorts of things that I bet you have around your house that you could do to attach these together.